Welcome to List 5 of That's What Shakespeare Said, where I'm covering famous idioms that were either made up by Shakespeare or at least he made him famous. This is the last list in the series, so let's get through them. The first idiom we're covering today is number 25, pure as the driven snow, which is from Hamlet. Here's what Hamlet says to Ophelia. If thou dost marry, I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow, thou shalt not escape calumny. Uh, this phrase was also used in The Winter's Tale and Macbeth, so Shakespeare was quite fond of it. So driven snow would be like a snow that is blown into a pile, maybe even off to the side, right? That is untouched, it's not walked upon. So being pure as the driven snow is like to be completely pure, to be unblemished, to be untouched. Usually the phrase is used in reference to like moral innocence or being uh, naive. So here's an example of that. With all the garbage in the media and the entertainment industry, it's very hard to remain pure as the driven snow in this day and age. Number 26 is seen better days, and that's from As You Like It. Duke Sr. from that play says this, True is it that we have seen better days, and have with holy bell been knolled to church, and sat at good men's feast, and wiped our eyes of drops that sacred pity hath engendered. So the idea for uh, seeing better days is something is looking shabby, it's deteriorated, it's in poor condition, it's going downhill. Anything that's seen better days has, well, it's had a better time in life. So an example, after someone rear-ended my car and then the carpet caught on fire, followed by me hitting a deer that ran across the highway, my vehicle had seen better days. It was a mess, right? All right, idiom number 27 is set my teeth on edge, and that's from Henry IV, part one. Now you're going to notice in the actual quote, there's an extra word in there. Hotspur says this, I had rather hear a brazen can stick turned or a dry wheel grate on the axle tree, and that would set my teeth nothing on edge, nothing so much as mincing poetry. Tis like the forced gate of a shuffling nag. So forms of this phrase have actually been around since the 1300s, but the current phrasing that we still use is from Shakespeare in the late 1500s. We've just actually dropped the nothing out of how Shakespeare originally termed it. So set my teeth on edge is something that leaves a bad taste in your mouth or a discomfort kind of quote unquote in your mouth literally or uh, figuratively. Uh, something sour can set your teeth on edge, but so can someone's annoying laugh. So it doesn't have to necessarily actually be uh, something you taste in your mouth. So an example, when she hit the wrong note on the flute, it really set my teeth on edge. But someone's annoying comment can set your teeth on edge as well. So it's really kind of a flexible phrase for whenever you're just bugged or annoyed. All right, idiom number 28 is wear my heart upon my sleeve by Othello. Iago, who is one of the villains in the play, says this, The native act and figure of my heart in compliment extern. Tis not long after, but I will wear my heart upon my sleeve for Dawes to peck at. I am not what I am. So to wear your heart upon your sleeve is to make yourself vulnerable, to be sensitive, to be open. You're not hiding who you are or what you're feeling. So in the play, Iago is the villain, so he's making it clear that he's not revealing what he's really thinking. Here's an example. In love, you sometimes have to take a risk to open up and wear your heart upon your sleeve to see if the relationship is going to work out for the long term. So that's kind of just opening yourself up to be sensitive, to be vulnerable, uh, and you could end up getting hurt. Number 29 in our list is Wild Goose Chase from Romeo and Juliet. Now the weird thing is this is a phrase that is actually connected to a game involving horses, where a horseman would you know, try to mimic or follow the lead of a head horse, like geese flying in formation. Uh, but Shakespeare coined the phrase from that game. Mercutio says this, Nay, if our wits run the wild goose chase, I am done. For thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than I am sure I have in my whole five. Was I with you there for the goose? So Mercutio is referring in the play to jokes that they're telling back and forth, but they keep changing topics. So he's kind of saying, if you keep changing topics, I'm not going to be able to keep up. I mean, my wit is not quick enough to keep up with you. 
So a wild goose chase is an effort or like an endeavor that's probably not going to be successful. And if you've watched any movie or TV about crime or, or police, uh, you often will hear the police were led on a wild goose chase trying to catch the elusive criminal. It's this idea where you're, you're trying to do something, but it's not going to happen. So example, when I called the credit card company, it was like a wild goose chase trying to talk to someone who's actually living rather than a computerized system. And here we are, number 30, the last in the list for this series. There are more. I mean, Shakespeare was a busy guy. But it's You've Got to Be Cruel to Be Kind, and that's by Hamlet. Hamlet says this to his mom, I do repent, but heaven hath pleased it so to punish me with this, and this with me, that I must be their scourge and minister. I will bestow him and will answer well the death I gave him. So again, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. Thus bad begins and worse remains behind. So cruel to be kind is the idea that sometimes harsh words or punishments or other measures are needed to bring about a benefit. Um, in this quote, Hamlet is justifying criticizing his mother for her own good. So think about a tetanus shot, which is painful, right, when you first get the shot, but it actually can prevent a severe infection. There was actually a song in the 1970s by the Kinks called Cruel to be Kind. Actually, it was by Nick Lowe, Cruel to be Kind. And so it's been around and been used and brought up in the culture as well. So example, even though he was forced to take summer school, it was really being cruel to be kind so that he would graduate before the next year started. Some of you might think learning these idioms is, is cruel, but I tell you, it will be kind in the future because you never know when someone is going to bring one up. Actually, just yesterday, someone who I was, I was having a conversation with had told me she was waiting with bated breath. And I was like, oh my gosh, do you know that that's from Merchant of Venice? You just quoted Shakespeare. And she felt like, wow, I'm smart because I quoted Shakespeare. So there you go. It's going to come in handy. You're going to start hearing these idioms out in the culture. So just listen for them. So thanks for checking these out. There's lots more stuff on the channel. It would be awesome if you could subscribe to it. If you missed any of the other four lists that are in this series, this is the playlist right here. Plus, I have a couple other things for you to check out. Would love it if you could cruise around and check out the channel. Until next time, take care of yourself.